is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Arizona. Sunny Sunday in Boston. D-backs baseball brought to you by Sanderson Ford. A hot afternoon along Yawkey Way where the Diamondbacks have a chance to make this a winning road trip in the series finale against the Red Sox. It's D-backs baseball on Fox Sports Arizona. Greetings from Fenway Park and welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthium and Bob Brenly along the way. Diamondbacks and the Red Sox, the series and road trip finale. Your pitching matchup here this afternoon. Rick Porcello for Boston and Bob on the mound for the Diamondbacks. It's Zach Greinke. Yeah, this is one of those you circle on the calendar. Porcello against Greinke. Porcello undefeated here at Fenway Park this year. And Zach Greinke has returned to form since coming back off the disabled list. This should be a beauty. And Zach 8-0 in his last 10 starts. He is 11-3 on the year. In the meantime, Porcello having an excellent year for the Red Sox. He's 15-3. Big tall right-hander throws a heavy sinking fastball. If he's on top of his game, expect a lot of ground balls off the D-backs bats today. First pitch is next on Fox Sports Arizona. The Diamondbacks and the Red Sox from Fenway Park in Boston. Arizona Diamondbacks baseball on Fox Sports Arizona is brought to you by CenturyLink. Switch to CenturyLink Prison TV for an advanced TV experience. Learn more at cprisontv.com. By Jack in the Box. Taste the all-new Double Jack Burger today only at Jack in the Box. By Oregano. Step up to the plate for a guaranteed home run at Oregano, your neighborhood pizza joint, location statewide. And buy your Valley Honda dealers where you get more standard features for less money. Massachusetts, Steve Berthew, and Bob Renly and Tom Walsh along the way. Remember to hydrate today, 92 and humid in downtown Boston. The series finale of Diamondbacks and the Red Sox, and Rick Porcello on the mound for Boston. Gene Segura steps into the batter's box, and we are set to go here. And 
Here's strike one. We're underway. Lance Barksdale, our plate umpire tonight. He'll have the balls and the strikes. Segura. 308 and 10 home runs. Sends this one out to Andrew Benintendi in left field, and it bangs off the green monster out there, Segura. Oh, they tried to get him in there halfway, and he snuck into second. Gene was caught halfway between first and second. That throw kind of went to the base runner that time, and Segura sneaks into second base. We talked about the unique nature of this ballpark, especially the green monster out there in left field. Benintendi played that ball well off the wall, but his throw back into the infield kind of went nowhere. Gene with a big turnaround first, hits the brakes, and then sees that error and throw. I believe that'll be ruled a base hit and an error on the left fielder for that error and throw. It is a single for Segura. E7 gets him to second base for Michael Bourne. Move him, move him, move him. Diamondbacks with a threat right away against Rick Porcello. Aaron Hill comes in a bit from third. And there's strike one. Michael Bourne, 252 and two homers this year. Diamondbacks were able to get two on the board in the first inning here Friday night. Michael has a pair of hits and a walk last night. He drove in a run. Porcello having himself an outstanding season and like a lot of the good pitchers around Major League Baseball your best chance to get him is early before he settles in out there on the mound 15 and 3 with a 3 4 0 ERA he just beat the Yankees here Tuesday night your Arizona forward starting pitcher for the Red Sox and Porcello has been pitching deep into ball games he has completed at least eight full innings in each of his last three starts. against just three losses two and one on board Slap foul and it's two and two Porcello against the Yankees Tuesday eight innings gave up just two runs on seven hits at six strikeouts. Eight and one in his last ten starts. Crowd still settling in at Fenway Park. A 135 local start on this sunny Sunday. And the humidity and temperature is back up there today. I got a little bit of a reprieve last night. Very comfortable evening last night. Game time temperature at 68 degrees. Rain held off until right after the ball game was over as Michael Bourne goes down chasing a change up. The lineup for Chip Hales, Diamondbacks. Seen Gene Segura at the top of the order. He'll play second base. Michael Bourne will be out in center field. Paul Goldschmidt at first base making his way to the plate right now. Jake Lamb at third base. Ricky Weeks Jr. serving as the designated hitter. Yasmani Tomas in right. Chris Owings at short. Brandon Drury in left field. And Tuffy Gosowicz doing the catching for Zach Greinke. He backs a chance today to go four and two on this six game road trip and a chance right now to strike first against Porcello with Segura at second one away for Goldie. Paul Goldschmidt 297 18 home runs on the year. He has one hit in the series a single Friday night he's walked three times. Porcello ahead quickly 0 and 2. A lot of sinkers from Rick Porcello who makes his living getting ground ball outs. Yeah, that sinking fastball a change up an occasional curve ball occasional cutter he's been working on that a little more recently something to get inside on the left handed hitters. That's right over the radio booth above the head of Tom Candiotti and Greg Schulte working just to our right here. With the glass open, we might add. Very hot, muggy day, as you mentioned here at Fenway Park. And the governor likes to work in the open air. Yes, he does. Yes. Candy was a big media sensation here this morning. Went on the Nesson pregame show talking about 
his relationship with Red Sox skipper John Farrell. They were teammates in Cleveland many years ago. And Candy has worked with Red Sox all-star knuckleball ace Stephen Wright as well. There's John Farrell, the Red Sox skipper. A couple of members of the Cleveland Indians rotation back in the day, the mid-80s. One and two on Goldie. One of them threw hard. <laughs> Take a guess which one. <laughs> Swing taps it back to the mound. Porcello has it. That's the second out. Our eye on defense for Boston is brought to you by Nationwide Vision Centers. Andrew Benintendi in left field today. Jackie Bradley Jr. back in the lineup out in center. Mookie Betts in right field. It'll be Aaron Hill and Brock Holt today on the left side of the infield with Dustin Pedroia and Hanley Ramirez on the right side. Sandy Leone doing the catching for the right hander Rick Porcello. Jake Lamb the hitter now batting cleanup today. Jake drove in a run in last night's game. He's hitting 272 with 24 homers. Still looking for his first base hit in this series. It's been a long road trip for Jake. Well, Segura really wandering way off that second base bag with a big secondary league. And Sandy Leone, the catcher, is keeping an eye on him. You can see the shift is on for Lamb. Brock Holt, the shortstop, right behind the bag at second. Now Gene trying to get as big a jump as he possibly can should Jake put that ball in play. We talked about Fenway Park and especially the short left field. Not always easy to score from second base on a base hit. Another fastball from Porcello, and Lamb is down 0 2. Jake has struggled on this road trip 0 for 19 with seven strikeouts. Got him. Diamondbacks get the leadoff man at second base and he's stranded there. Zach Branke coming up from Fenway Park. Park, the Diamondbacks and the Red Sox, the series finale, and your Arizona Ford starting pitcher for the D-backs is Zach Greinke. 11 and 3 and 18 starts, a 3-6-70 ERA. Zach, a winner over the Mets in his previous outing. That was Tuesday at City Field. And his return from that strain left oblique that kept him out for more than a month. Yeah, we weren't quite sure what to expect from Zach coming back off the disabled list, but he has hit the ground running. He looks like the same guy he was before the injury. Dustin Pedroia, the former ASU Sun Devil, will lead it off for the Red Sox. Pedroia hitting an even 300. He's got 12 home runs. Three hits in the series, all singles. He drove in a run last night.
Zach Greinke coming off that six inning outing Tuesday at City Field and the win over the Mets. Gave up three runs, five hits. Walked one and had six strikeouts. And I guess Bob pretty much looked like the same Zach Greinke that we've come to know here. Yeah, I mean, the stuff was good. Basketball had great movement. The changeup was uh, really effective against the Mets in that ball game. Didn't really need a lot of breaking pitches, but uh, as I said, just hit the ground running after that DL stand. Pedroia slapped that one down the right field line. So Moss is out there. He cuts it off before it gets to the pesky pole, and it's a leadoff single for the Red Sox second baseman. Let's take a look at the lineup for John Farrell's Boston Red Sox today. Justin Pedroia on at first base after that leadoff single. He'll be playing second base. Brock Holt at shortstop. Mookie Betts in right field. Big Poppy David Ortiz, the DH. Haley Ramirez at first base. Jackie Bradley Jr. out in center field. Former D-back Aaron Hill at third base today. Sandy Leone doing the catching. Andrew Benintendi in left field. And Rick Porcello on the mound. The super utility man Brock Holtz got the start in left field last night. He's playing shortstop today. Fastball missed and it's 1-0 on Holt. 251 and six home runs. He homered here last night. Drove in two runs, scored three times. Holt's last four homers have come right here at Fenway Park. Two and zero. Oh. I didn't actually see this with my own eyes, but I've uh, been told that Zach Greinke warmed up down in the bullpen in a T-shirt. Can you do that? Sure. Very hot, muggy day here. Didn't want to sweat through his uniform before the ball game even began, so he just took his warm-up pitches down in the bullpen in a T-shirt. It's very chill. Very chill, very cool. <laughs> and my old buddy Mike Kruko used to have the exact opposite theory on hot, muggy days like this. He used to come out during batting practice with a sweatshirt on. His theory was if I make myself overheated when I take the sweatshirt off, it'll feel like it's considerably cooler. Playing tricks on your mind. Yeah. Two and two now on Brock Holt. Whatever works. I mean, we've talked about the heat and humidity in the past. The guys putting cabbage leaves in their hats. So there he is right there. Well, as long as it doesn't say Chico's Bail Bonds on it or something, <laughs> you know, you're probably fine. He's got his D-backs T-shirt on. Those are nice shirts. Sausage King. That's right. We should have got those yesterday. Pedroia holds it first, and that one just missed on Holt. The count is full three and two. Mookie Betts on deck. Pedroia holds on the 3 2 pitch and Holt slaps it foul down the left field line. This guy does a little bit of everything. As we told you last night, he started games this year in left field, right field, second base, third base, shortstop. Played some center field last year, some first base too. He does it all for John Farrell. All right, one of the things he does is hit long home runs like he did in that sixth inning last night. He hit it out there over the Red Sox bullpen. Rinky grunting all the way through that hard changeup and strikes out Holt for the first out. Our eye on defense for the D-backs is brought to you by Nationwide Vision Center. Up here will be Drury, Bourne, and Tomas left to right. Jake Lamb at third base, Chris Owings at short, Gene Segura at second, Paul Goldschmidt over at first base with Tuffy Gosowish doing the catching for right-hander Zach Granke. The right-hand hitting, Mookie Betts. An all-star this year for the Boston at the age of just 23. Slider missed, and it's 1-0. He did not go. Angel Hernandez, the umpire down there at first base. Betts at 309. He's got 23 home runs and 76 RBIs. Just one hit in the series. He got a single last night. Kind
have some decent cloud cover overhead. Probably call this partly cloudy, but uh, you're going to get some intermittent breaks of sunshine and cloud cover. Perfect day for the flip down sunglasses, which I'm sure nobody will wear. At least not over their eyes. Yeah. <laughs> A beautiful day here at the ballpark. Cranky 13 pitches so far, only six for strikes. Went to three and two on Holt. Now he's behind two and zero on Betts. Gets this up in the air, and that ball is going to go. Mookie Betts hits it over the Green Monster. That's his 24th homer, and it's two nothing Red Sox. Well, Mookie Betts is a little guy, 5'9", 180. He doesn't look like he's got much power, but he has got some pop. He is second in the major leagues behind only David Ortiz in extra base hits. He really generates a lot of bat speed through the hitting zone. Get some backspin on that ball and that sailed way out of here. You think about Pedroia at the top of the order. He's a little guy that swings hard. Brock Holt hit a long home run last night. We just saw Mookie Betts drive one out of here over the green monster. So here's the major league leader in extra base hits. David Ortiz, 3-10 and 26 homers. He's knocked in 90 runs. And that OPS leads all of Major League Baseball. Shift is on. There's a strike on one. <laughs> T's going to bunt. Yeah, go ahead. Well, that whole left side of the infield is wide open. He famously had that headline in Boston years ago, Williams Bunts, when Lou Boudreau put that <laughs> shift on, known as the Ted Williams shift. And Williams got so frustrated with it, he tried to bunt away from it. The number nine of Teddy Ballgame here at Fenway Park. who struck out Holt earlier in the inning gets big poppy quickly two down like a backdoor breaking ball that time that got David Ortiz to chase bounces right off the back tip of home plate and not gonna run the first big poppy does not run anywhere these days We'll walk back to the dugout. Which is why I chuckled when he showed bunt right there, because if you do bunt successfully to the left side, now you've got to run. I wonder if that occurred to him. <laughs> may not have. Hanley Ramirez, 270, 16 homers. He had two three run home runs Friday night here. Drove in six. It was 0 for 4 last night. Frankie grunting away. That fastball missed. It's 1 0. But Ramirez, despite his two homer game Friday night, hitting only 211 since the All Star break. <laughs> I've lost track, Bob, of how many times we've seen a Diamondback starting pitcher. Have a 20 pitch or more first inning and give up at least a couple of runs. Yep. It seems to happen far too often. And recently it happens after his team has given him a lead in the top half of the first inning on the road. Yeah. That's what happened to Patrick Corbin here Friday. Diamondbacks were up 2 0 after a half inning. They trailed it 4 2 after one. And even an ace like Zach Greinke has run into that problem this year, like this ball game today. Base hit for Ramirez. He knocks it into left. Third Red Sox hit in the first inning. That'll bring up Jack Bradley Jr. Bradley Jr., the center fielder, 283, has got 17 home runs. He was off last night, went 0 for 4 with three strikeouts in Friday's opener. Diamondbacks again will put on the shift. Jake Lamb will stay near third base. Owings on the first base side of second, the shortstop. Yeah. 
Mike Betts with his 24th home run of the season. Driving home Dustin Pedroia spotting the Red Sox in that two run lead. He's hit 23 homers over his last two seasons combined, 24 this year alone. He's going to be a terrific player. Owings has that one from the second base spot, a 6 3 put out, but Betts' two run homer has made it 2 0 Boston. Red Sox put a two spot on the board in the bottom half of the first inning. Time to take a look at our Geik, or rather our <laughs> Valley Honda dealer. Keys to the ball game today. Guys toweling off, trying to stay cool. You want to win the trip. Swept the three games at City Field in New York. Dropped the first two here at Fenway Park. But a win on getaway day would mean the Diamondbacks win the trip. Yeah, he finished four and two on the six game trip through New York and Boston. Ricky Weeks Jr. leads off the second against Rick Porcello. Ricky 250 and six home runs three hits and three RBIs in the series he homered here in his first at bat Friday night he is again the DH today batting fifth and he's ahead two balls and no strikes Hill at third. Nice scoop by Hilly down there. That's four in a row retired by Porcello. Yasmani right Tomas. Back in the lineup last night, 0 for 4 with a strikeout after he missed the previous four games with a stiff neck. 269 and 21 homers. The 0 for last night snapped a five game hitting streak. Osmani had been so good during the course of that five game hitting streak of getting pitches he could handle getting strikes that he could get the barrel on last night uh, swung at a few pitches out of the zone looked like he had predetermined he was going to swing at some pitches before he even saw them and a very non competitive at bat in that eighth inning against Brad Ziegler when Brad came in bases loaded nobody out and struck out the side on ten pitches. Oh and two he got Weeks Junior to loss and Owings in that inning. Got his third strikeout. Up the ladder fastball. They're about shoulder high. 
Marcelo not overpowering with his fastball, but uh, as we mentioned earlier, that sinking fastball when he keeps it down at the knees gets a lot of ground balls and occasionally will elevate that four seamer like he did right there to Yasmani Tomas. Porcello is jumping ahead of these Diamondback hitters. That was his third 0 2 count and his second three pitch strikeout of the ball game. Here's Chris Owings. See you the shortstop again today. 278, two home runs. He has three hits and a base on balls in this series, Chris Owings, and he's ahead 2 0. Pops it up behind second base. Holt and Pedroia. Pedroia's got it. Six in a row set down by Rick Porcello. Diamondbacks trail the Red Sox 2-0. Bottom two at Fenway Park. DVAX fans, if you can't catch the games on TV, you can stream them live on your mobile device with the all new Fox Sports Go app. Just download the app and take Fox Sports Arizona and Diamondbacks baseball with you wherever you go. Aaron Hill, the former D back, leads off the second against Zach Rinke. Red Sox lead it 2 0. Mookie Betts, a two run homer, is 24th of the year. Aaron Hill, 273, nine home runs this year between the Brewers and the Red Sox. And he slaps it the other way for a base hit. And Aaron Hill single leads off the second. That's the fourth hit so far against Zach Greinke. The catcher, Sandy Leone, who had a big night here last night. 40 games with Boston this year. He's hitting 390 with five homers. And a couple of hits and a walk last night. He wrapped a home run around the pesky pole in right field. His second home run in his last six games. Hit for Leone. He's having a big home stand for Boston. Aaron Hill will stop at second. And a couple of singles open up the Red Sox second. Well, Leone on this home stand against the Yankees and now the Diamondbacks is 9 for 14. Well, we had talked about the Red Sox struggles behind the plate. Uh, Blake Swihart struggled defensively, ultimately got hurt. He'll have surgery tomorrow on his ankle. Christian Vasquez, another one of their catching prospects, struggled mightily up here. You could make an argument that Sandy Leone uh, might be the most valuable player on this Red Sox team this year. They got him off the scrap heap from the Washington Nationals a couple of years ago. He did almost nothing last year in the Red Sox system. Spent most of his time playing at Triple A Pawtucket. 
but has hit like an all-star since he's been up here this year. Here's the rookie, Andrew Benintendi. Getting the start in left field this afternoon. Benintendi only 22. Ten games for the Red Sox this year after he made his major league debut about two weeks ago. And he's off to a very good start, 11 hits and 29 at-bats. Benintendi two for seven in the series. He had a pair of hits last night, including an RBI double. Both his hits coming to the opposite field last night. A soft line drive into left and then a ringing double into the gap in left center. Yeah, that double in the fifth inning part of a three-run ball for He slaps this one fair down the right field line. It'll bring Aaron Hill home with a third Boston run. He'll stop Leone at third, and it's another RBI double for the rookie, Andrew Benintendi. Straight hits open up the Red Sox second against Greinke. Belt high fastball, middle of the plate. Zach's made some mistakes with location in this ball game already, and this relentless Red Sox offense will not allow you to make very many mistakes. Greinke so far has yet to retire a batter in the second. He's given up three runs on six hits. Leon is at third. Ben intend to get second to lead off man Pedroia, who singled and scored to start the ball game for Boston. Pedroia has now hit safely in six straight games. Four doubles and five RBIs in his last five. Base hit. Leon scores, and it's 4 0 Boston. Four straight hits open up the Red Sox second. Big long stride by Dustin Pedroia. The big swing produces a hard ground ball through that left side. Four hits in this inning for the Red Sox on eight pitches. Brock Holt, who struck out his first time up. First base side of the mound. Granky spins and comes home. What a play by Tuffy. Goes away back there to hang on and put the tag on Benintendi. Granky, the gold glover, spins and throws, and they cut down the run at the plate. What a play. Man, that's almost a blind throw as Zach Granky fields this ball on the first base side. Spins and fires to Tuffy right in the spot that throw had to be to get Benintendi at home plate. Looks like Tuffy got the tag right up in the grill. The Red Sox rookie. Nice play. Quick glove hand by Tuffy Gozowish back there. Outstanding. That's the first out in the second as Granke tries to stop the bleeding, but he's still got two Red Sox base runners behind him. And the batter is Mookie Betts, who homered his first time up. Over the monster seats and on to Lansdowne Street. This was Mookie Betts in the first, his 24th of the year.
for Zach Greinke the 14th homer he's allowed in just 116 innings pitched this year as opposed to last season when he gave up 14 home runs in 222 innings. Of course, some of that can be attributed to pitching your home games at Chase Field as opposed to night games at Dodger Stadium. Big difference. Yeah. Well, Greinke has not lost a start since May 12th. He is 8 0 in his last 10. And his ERA over that span is a very Greinke like 2 4 7. But he's had a rough start to the ball game here today at Fenway. Loki Betts gets a hold of another one, and it's gone. Loki Betts, a two-run home run in the first, a three-run shot in the second, and it's 7 nothing. Second homer of the game for Loki Betts against Zach Greinke, both coming on 2-0 pitches. Quick bat through the hitting zone and gets that one on the barrel once again. More of a line drive home run into the front row above the Green Monster. Chip Hale. They're going to challenge that. I think they want to challenge perhaps fan interference. Now we talked about this a little bit. There is an area, it's sort of a a table or a tray area that juts out in front of that first row of monster seats. So even if it looks like you're reaching out over to catch the ball, it would bounce off the top of that and go out anyway. But let's see how far he was able to extend this fan. You can see there's a good three feet or so in front of that seat, so it likely hits off the top of that and goes yeah. over. Unfortunately, I don't think this is going to be overturned. You can see that area you're talking about right there. Very tough to reach out over the green monster and interfere with the ball in play. We're showing it on the big board here at Fenway with a uh, spotlight zoomed in to see where the ball would have hit had the fan not touched it and uh, at least the view we have it clearly was out of here and boundary calls such as fan interference and home runs are subject to review doesn't necessarily have to be a challenge you can ask the umpires to do so and this is not a D-back challenge it is an umpire review. It's a home run. For Mookie Betts, he's knocked in five runs in two innings. The sixth time in his very young career, Mookie Betts has had at least two homers in a game. David Ortiz. Frankie got him a strike out the first time. Huh? Ball missed inside. 1 0 on Big Poppy. Dominic Leone started warming up in the Diamondback bullpen. If you missed our pregame show, Todd Walsh was reporting that Chip Hale said before the ball game today, Patrick Corbin has been taken out of the starting rotation and now will go with the bullpen. Zach Gottley will replace Corbin as a Diamondback starting pitcher. Patrick was scheduled to start the game Wednesday at Chase Field against the Mets. He will now work in relief as he try and tries to get himself sorted out. One and two on our team. And this Red Sox offense uh, throughout this series has really been counting on the home run ball. Seven of the nine runs they scored on Friday night via the homer. Three of six last night. So far today, five of seven. Five hits and five runs in this inning against Greinke. Strikes out Ortiz for the second time. Another high fastball right over the middle of the plate to David Ortiz, who's a really good low ball hitter. Does struggle with that pitch up in the zone if you've got a little extra giddy up on him. 
Henley Ramirez singled in the first. Sounded like he hit it near the end of the bat a little bit. Gene Segura thought he had a chance to make a leaping catch out there, but just got over his head into center field. Jackie Bradley Jr., who grounded out to end the first, will be the ninth Boston batter of the second inning against Grinky. Ramirez at first and two down. Diamondbacks put the shift on. Strike one. Bradley struck out three times Friday night. The strikeouts for him have started to pile up. He's punched out 20 times in his last 15 games. And during that stretch, he's hitting only about 160. Blast that one toward the pesky pole. And it's off the pole, gone, a home run. Jackie Bradley Jr., and it's 9-0. Sandy Leone, the catcher, wrapped one around the pole. Bradley Jr. hits one off the pole, and that's the last pitch Cranky will throw today. Right down in that happy zone for most left-handed hitters. Jackie Bradley, no exception. That pitch down and in, a line drive about halfway up the pole down there in right field. Zach Cranky gives up nine runs in one and two-thirds. Back after this. Credit Union pitching change. The numbers on Greinke, nine earned on ten hits. He got five outs. And Aaron Hill will bat for the second time in this inning. He let off the second with a single and scored a run. Leon, a 7-8-0 ERA, 15 appearances. He has pitched scoreless baseball in each of his last two times out. Finished up the sweep at City Field in New York on Thursday. And then Friday here at Fenway struck out the side on 10 pitches. 
but he's behind on Hill 2-0. Tenth man to bat in the Boston second. Here's a strike two and one. Cutter there from Dominic Leone. Two balls and two strikes. I know one guy that'll be glad to get back to the air conditioning at Chase Field, and that's Tuffy Gosowitz. He's had to catch a couple of games under the most adverse conditions on this road trip. They caught Friday night really hot after catching the day game on Thursday in New York. Full count three and two. Got him. Well, the Red Sox bat around. They score seven in the second and lead it nine nothing. We start the third greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. Look around the rest of the National League West where the Padres are trailing at City Field in New York. 2-0, they're in the fifth. The Rockies in Philadelphia, they're in a rain delay there. Phillies lead 1-0 at the bank. Giants host the Orioles, Dodgers and the Pirates later today. Brandon Drury leads off the third against Rick Porcello with their strike one. Brandon in left field today, 255 and 10 home runs. Singled and walked Friday, one for four in the series. Ah. Rick Porcello, nine with a now with a nine-run lead. Red Sox are 17 and six when Porcello starts for them this year. That was inside, and it's two and two. Porcello coming off a brilliant month of July, five and zero oh in five starts last month. And he finished that month with a complete game win at Anaheim over the Angels. It'll be a tricky play for Porcello. Bear hands it and throws it almost off the bag. Ramirez able to keep a foot on there. That's the first down in the third.
Porcello, eight and one in his last ten starts. Pale out there talking with Ted Barrett, the crew chief, who's the third base umpire today. And they will not challenge that one at first base. That's the first out of the third. Duffy goes a wish. Had a great road trip for Tuffy. Batting 204 with three home runs. He is homered in back to back games. Hit a triple and a home run Thursday at City Field against the Mets. Two more hits Friday night here, including a home run into the monster seats and left. Yeah, Porcello got his bat that time. So he'll go back and get his double X gamer. He's ready. Most players have at least two, sometimes three or four or five game ready bats already with pine tar and rosin on them just in case one gets broken. There is a pecking order, right? Oh, I like yeah. this one the most and this one the second most. Oh, yeah, you guys have little codes that they'll write on the bats on the knob of the bat, uh, you know, double X, triple X. This is drifting toward the seats and out of play. Did you have a code? Not really. You know, I just <laughs> knew, you know. You, 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 most players, you get a dozen bats in a box, and you get the box, and you open them up, and you go through them, and you weigh each one individually. There may be a tenth of an ounce different from one bat to the other. One may be an eighth of an inch longer than the other. Sometimes there's very subtle differences from bat to bat. You look for the the best grain, and you save those for your gamer bats, and the ones that aren't so good, you use those in batting practice, but. Uh, yeah, that day you get the bats uh, from your company and sit there in your locker and go through one after another after another. That's uh, when you determine which one's going to be your triple X gamer. Yeah, I think I've told a story in the past. A former teammate of mine, Joel Youngblood, uh, we were playing a game at the old Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh. And Joel was a part time player, a pinch hitter supreme. That one's grounded to short, should be no problem. Brock Holt throws him out, two down. And Joel was very meticulous about his bats and you know, went through all of them and picked the ones that he was saving for those big at bats late in a ball game. And I made an out early in the game and came back to the dugout, and there was a little hallway, probably about 25 or 30 feet long, and the bat rack sat at the end of the hallway. And in a fit of anger, I fired my bat down the hallway, and it unfortunately just clipped the handle right off of Joel Youngblood's triple X game that he was saving for a big at bat against Kent to Colby late in the game <laughs> and uh, boy you know anybody that knows Joel Youngblood and how much attention he pays to detail with his bats uh, that was the wrong thing to do I apologize for about two months popped it up Leon will give it a look near the on deck circle for Boston but it's in the seats. That was it. You had to buy him a watch, a steak dinner, nope. 50 bucks. No, nope. I just tried to be as contrite as possible so Joel didn't choke me out. Just kind of wear it. <laughs> Segura has the Diamondbacks only hit today, a single to lead off the ball game. Banged it off the wall over the head of Andrew Benintendi out there. Down 0-2. And there's a call, strike three. Four strikeouts for Porcello, who has retired nine straight and leads it 9 nothing.
half of the third inning. When the D-backs win, you win at Papa John's. The day after every Diamondbacks win, you get 50% off your regular menu price online order at Papa John's. Enter promo code D-backs50 at PapaJohns.com. Dominic Leone back out there in relief of Zach Greinke. A short day for Zach today. A two-run Boston first, followed by a seven-run second. And Sandy Leone, who single and scored his first time up, leads off the third. Well, when this happened to Patrick Corbett on Friday here in the series opener at Fenway Park, Diamondbacks got a tremendous performance from Zach Godley, who gave them five and a third innings of two hit ball, struck out four. But uh, Godley has now been moved into the rotation spot that had been occupied by Patrick Corbin. Patrick will, uh, Patrick will now work out of the bullpen. But the point being today, Bob, that there is no Zach Godley back there this yeah. afternoon. Going to have to ham and egg it. Ideally, Dominic Leone keeps his pitch count down and can give you two, three, maybe four innings out of the bullpen and then just see where you go from there. Boy, the starters in this series. I got this card a little while ago and it took me considerable amount of time to digest it. Leone fouls that one back. The starters for the Diamondbacks in this series pitched a total of eight and two thirds innings. Gave up 26 base hits and 23 runs in those eight and two thirds innings. Now there were six unearned runs scored because the Diamondbacks also didn't play great defense in this series. Patrick Corbin, Archie Bradley, and now Zach Rinke. Leon hits this in the air, shallow right center, born on the run coming in, and he's got it. One out now for Andrew Benintendi. An RBI double his first time up. So he's three for eight in this series. Benintendi, the Red Sox first round pick in the draft last year out of the University of Arkansas. Seventh overall pick in that draft. Now here he is in the big leagues. He's got 40 on his back. That was the number that the Hawk wore when he was hitting home runs at Fenway Park. Hawk Harrelson. He gone. <laughs> one and one. <laughs> Hawk used to hit him over the monster here. There's a picture as you come into the press box here of a very young Hawk Harrelson. Segura at second. Is he wearing one of those, uh, what do you call those suits he used to wear? They're like those weird Leisure suits. Yeah, the weird one piece. He had about a thousand of them. Wilson Pedroia making his way to the play with two outs here in the inning. I mentioned this to you earlier. We talked about the caveman quiz that we used to have when I was with the Giants. Donnie Robinson would come in on Sunday mornings and uh, read the trivia section out of the newspaper to great hilarity of his teammates. And uh, apparently Dustin Pedroia is that guy for the Red Sox. Uh, the, the Sunday morning rant. What was he ranting about today? Any well, idea? First of all, he's either had too much coffee or not enough coffee, day game after a night game. And uh, he was a little upset with the official score today when he showed up at the ballpark. There was a ground ball hit down to Travis Shaw at third base at uh, Pedroia's words left an exit hole in his back, and uh, it was ruled an error on Travis Shaw. He thought it should have been a base hit, and that was all he needed to get him started. There's something about Sunday mornings, especially after you've played a late Saturday night game, and you know, you know it's getaway day. Everybody's packed up, ready to go. Probably didn't get much sleep. Probably didn't have much breakfast. Got to go out and play a hot, steamy day game like this at Fenway Park, and some guys get a little grumpy under those circumstances, and it makes for a lot of fun in the clubhouse. <laughs> well, Pedroia not very grumpy today. He's got three hits. 
three at bats, three singles. He's already scored twice and knocked in a run. And he's got a two out single in the third. Yeah, that's where we talk about baseball being a family. You know, you're around these guys every day from the beginning of spring training until the end of the season. Every day, same guy, same locker next to you. And you get to know which buttons to push and <laughs> when a guy's in a good mood, when he's in a bad mood. And uh, apparently, Dustin Pedroia is the guy that rallies the troops on Sunday mornings. Well, he's famous for getting himself all wired up. He used to drink about 17 Red Bulls a day. <laughs> Jake Lamb has that one. Leon is out of the third. We'll head to the fourth at Fenway Park. He backs down 9 0. Park, I'm Todd Walsh and uh, Steve and Bob. Uh, a remarkable moment that we had yesterday that we showed you on uh, Diamondbacks Live, the pregame show today. And, and I will say this I, I've spent the last 20 years around Coyotes captain Shane Doan and all the things that he does. And there's a shot to right, Steve. Take it. Michael Bourne takes it out of here. That's a home run for Michael Bourne, his third of the year to lead off the fourth inning. And the Diamondbacks are on the board against Rick Porcello. He had retired nine in a row. In any event, as we get back to action in a moment, I, I, I just wanted to share this, and Steve, um, you've been around David Ortiz and followed him, I'm sure, his entire career here. I've heard so many things about his generosity and his spirit and his understanding of the human condition, if you will. But having a, a chance to meet him yesterday and deliver a card from young David Moss back in the Valley of the Sun, because they met not too very long ago, as David fulfilled his father's bucket list wish his father had passed away David Ortiz saw him in the stands went over took a picture hit a home run later we delivered the card to David Ortiz on our pregame show that's part one of the story Kim okay, part two is better than that yes because Pretty young good. David Moss was watching Diamondbacks live and saw that and we actually have uh, visual evidence of that which we'll share for you or with you I should say in a little bit but uh, it was obvious that uh, David does this Quite a bit. Here's a play to short, long throw. Brock Holt throws out Goldie. But the second the Red Sox found out that, that we had a card from David Moss and David Ortiz found out about it, he made time after batting practice, after he had a meet and greet inside the Red Sox clubhouse about 25 minutes before we went on the air. We were whisked into the clubhouse for a, a meeting with David and he remembered the moment he remembered the kid and he clearly said as you may have heard in the pregame show when I see signs like that a kid holding up a sign that his father passed away I do anything I can to find them and do what he did well he became in many ways after the Boston Marathon bombing here and mm -hmm. everybody remembers the, the slogan Boston strong which you still see all over the city here he became in a sense the voice of the city yep. and the Red Sox were great in getting behind uh, 
the public movement involving uh, just getting over that incident because it happened on Patriots Day, which is a very unique uh, New England and Massachusetts thing here. Mm -hmm. And he was uh, outstanding in, in sort of helping everybody get over that and get back together on everything. Well, I, I can tell you, probably count on one hand where I've reached out to somebody of his stature in all of professional sports in a moment like that and had the response that we got in return. Didn't hesitate. They said whenever you can get into the clubhouse, he will find you, and he did. Well, nice work by uh, the whole staff, Fox Sports Arizona, Al, and all you guys, and our thanks especially to the Red Sox and David Ortiz yep. for making all that happen. That's a great job. Jake Lamb. No, he didn't go, Ted Barrett. Two and two. Well, yesterday, uh, when you went down to the bullpen to talk to my son Michael, and you asked about David Ortiz and what that experience had been like being around him, and Michael was just amazed at how David Ortiz makes time for everything that yep. comes his way over the course of a day. You can imagine how in demand he is. Porcello's on the swing, and Bunn has trouble picking it up, and Jake Lamb beats it out. Porcello didn't quite get that one on the first try, and Lamb's aboard. Checking the replay on the big board there. You're absolutely right. Rick Porcello kind of fanned on the first attempt there to pick up that swinging bunt. I'll bring up Ricky Weeks Jr. They have given Porcello an error on that one. Another Red Sox error up on the board. So E1 puts Lamb at first. Ricky Weeks grounded out his first time up. Taps that one foul. Well, we've kept you very busy here. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. We have you running all over the city on various assignments. And you guys have, uh, Al and everybody, has really stepped up to the plate. Yeah, this was... Uh if you may have heard the pregame show, it just sort of dawned on me as this week unfolded or weekend. Just a series, there's a strike of unforgettable moments here at Fenway Park. And unfortunately, they haven't happened during the, the field of play or on the field of play in game, but all around it. I mean, from Steve Hathaway to, to David Ortiz and those guys climbing up into the red seat. And there was a photo bomb last night of David Ortiz that has gone viral for some <laughs> cancer patients here in Boston. I mean, this is kind of what you expect, Steve, when you come here and you don't get a chance to, to visit but for every three years or so. It's a special place. Well, we got to see Michael Brenly and visit with yeah, Michael. Yeah, absolutely. Just saw him a moment ago in the bullpen. Got to feed and burp the twins. <laughs> I need Michael to tip Brenly. you for that, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Michael looks hot with all that hair. Oh, he'd tell you it doesn't bother him. That's how cool he is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, Michael and I went to grab a bite to eat after the ball game last night, and uh, as you well know, the rain was coming in just as the game wow. ended. It sprinkled a little bit, and then it stopped. So we thought, okay, we're safe, just like game one of the series. It blew right by us. Not so much. No, so we went in and ate, and when we stepped out of that restaurant, it was like Noah's Ark. Uh, it started raining so hard. We ran the block back here to Fenway Park, and uh, I had every intention of ordering up a, an Uber to take me two blocks to my hotel. And uh, Brian Butterfield, the third base coach uh, for the Red Sox, was just leaving the parking lot. I said, where are you going? I'll give you a ride. So thank you to Butter for giving Michael and I a ride home last night in the midst of that uh, unbelievable thunderstorm. They have had a very severe drought all throughout New England all summer long. They've had zero rain here, but it was a monsoon. Last night, nice play there by Brock Holtz. And the Red Sox shortstop turns to our thanks to Todd Walsh. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth. Diamondbacks on the board, but they trail it 9 1.
back at Major League Baseball brought to you by Geico. Go back to 2007 for the 132nd time in his career. Bobby Cox got ejected from a Major League game, <laughs> breaking John McCraw's all time record. Every one you pick is either catcher related or manager <laughs> ejection related. There's a pattern there. Yeah, well, you know, the thing you have to realize is John McCraw's record, which uh, apparently was 131, took him 42 years to accomplish. Bobby Cox did it in only 28. Very much more efficient. Mookie Betts has been up twice, homered twice. A two run home run in the first, a three run shot in the second. There's 24 and 25 on the year for the Red Sox All Star right fielder. I bet if you went back and looked at Bobby Cox's ejections, as that one's ripped into left field, that stays red hot. Three for three. I bet you. 75% or more of Bobby Cox ejections happened in the first two innings of a ball game, establishing a strike zone for his pitching staff. Oh, okay. He would stand over there on that top step and yell at the home plate umpire every time Tommy Glavin had a ball called on a pitch just off the outside corner, or Greg Maddox would throw a sinker that strayed just off the corner. He wanted that pitch for his pitching staff, and he would argue for it early in the game and many times got excused for the rest of the evening. It's easy to forget that Bobby Cox managed a lot of games here at Fenway Park because he started out as the manager of the Blue Jays. David Ortiz. Ortiz struck out twice in two at bats against Zach Greinke. A base hit. Rookie Betts on the run. He'll head to third. Butterfield will stop him there. A pair of singles open up the Boston fourth against Dominic Leone. Ball hit like a bullet right by Goldie. He was holding the runner on first base. Didn't have much range as he strayed off a step or two off the bag, and that one just shot by him down into the right field corner. His action in the Diamondback bullpen. Leon got the final out of the second inning after Granke left. Gave up one single against four banners in the third, but the first two have reached in the fourth. And the banner is Hanley Ramirez. Red Sox already with 13 hits. Ramirez two for two a pair of singles he scored a run. And two on Henley. I'm not quite sure why Paul Goldschmidt's still holding on David Ortiz over there at first base. He could go at any moment. Now, an eight run lead, if he takes off, that could start some really ugly baseball for the rest of the afternoon. Two and two. Third, Sutter step, almost pulls Segura off the bag, and too much for Gene to try and get Ramirez as Bet scores the 10th Red Sox run. Well, 
trouble finding the handle down there at third base and that slight delay just threw off the entire rhythm of the play Gene Segura could only hang on to that baseball rather than risk an error and throw it first. Jackie Bradley Junior homered his last time up his 18th of the year off the pesky pole in the right field. Jackie Bradley Jr. was recently approached by Jim Rice, Red Sox legend and Hall of Famer, and Rice went up to him and said, you know what, you shut your eyes when you swing. <laughs> and Bradley, no, I don't. Uh, yeah, go ahead, you do. And Jackie Bradley Jr. went to the video and looked, and he said, there's Jim Rice at number 14. He said, well, you know what? He was right. He had been swinging with his eyes closed. Had no idea he was doing that. That's a problem. Apparently, <laughs> basically, he was trying to hit the ball blindfolded. You ever heard of a guy doing that? No. I mean, yeah, occasionally you'll get a shot uh, of a guy swinging a bat with his eyes closed, or a catcher catching a pitch with his eyes closed. And uh, I prefer to think it's just really good timing on the part of the photographer. But uh, <laughs> one of those high-speed lenses. This has got a chance to stay playable for Lamb, and it does right in front of the Diamondback dugout. And that's the second out of the fourth. That'll bring up Aaron Hill. Aaron has single, scored a run, and struck out. Pale trying to get two and a third innings of relief out of Dominic Leone, who's now over 30 pitches. Zach Ranke, if you're just joining us, had a short day. He got only five outs, gave up nine runs, all of them earned. A two run first and a seven run second for Boston. Seven runs in one inning, a career high in any inning for Zach Ranke. And the third time this year, he's given up at least seven runs. Bouncer to shortstop for Chris Owings. The underhand toss to Segura. The force on Ramirez, and that's the inning. Red Sox add one more. Diamondbacks trail it 10 1. Fans, anytime the D-backs score five runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating locations. D-backs so far through four innings have been out hit 13 to two. They trail at 10-1 as Bonnie yes. Tomas leads off the fifth against Rick Porcello. Rick Porcello today has thrown 12 out of 14 first pitch strikes. He's had 7-0-2 counts against the Diamondbacks today. He has not walked a batter. He struck out four. Segura's single to lead off the ball game, and Bourne's homer to lead off the fourth. 
The only hit so far is Tomas swings at the first pitch and grounds out. Steven Matz the Mets has a no hitter through six innings against the Padres. Just saw Steven Matz last week at City Field. Pitching of course with that bone spur in his elbow that will have to be removed after the year with surgery. COO for one. Mets are in at City Field starting tomorrow for the first of three. We'll see Bartolo Colon, Noah Syndergaard, and Jonathan Neese in that series Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Then we go to San Diego to take on the Padres. We're only home for three, so don't unpack or anything. Just enough time to do laundry, repack the suitcase. Four games set at Petco Park next weekend starting on Thursday. Then we're home for four against the Braves and three against the Reds, the 22nd through the 28th. Get your tickets at dbacks.com. Don't forget dollar hot dogs on Tuesdays, fans. Use your hashtag Teal Tuesday on the Twitter. Dollar hot dogs on every Tuesday home game in August. The Mets on the 16th and the Braves on the 23rd. Chris Owings bangs that into left field. CO's now hit safely in seven straight. He's had a really good road trip. He's got 11 hits on the road trip. And a one out single here in the fifth. And yeah, we speculated that perhaps uh, the increase in offense for Chris Owings is because he knows he's playing the same position every day when he gets to the ballpark. But even mechanically, he's letting the ball get deeper into the hitting zone. I mentioned that back foot. His right foot occasionally will come a little loose and kind of slide around back there. Doesn't really have a good base underneath him, but lately he's kept those feet planted, really driving the ball well. Brandon Jury first pitch swinging. High in the air, very bright sun up there for Bradley Jr. and Betts. And Jackie Bradley Jr. has that for the second out in the fifth. Well, that's something that's really changed over the years in this game. A lot of things have changed, but you know, it used to be if you were down by nine runs early in a ball game, you take until you get a strike. Try to run up a pitch count on that pitcher. You need a ton of base runners to get back into the ball game. You know, what's the urgency of swinging at a first pitch? And that has changed, as I said, a lot of guys are first ball hitters. A lot of pitchers like Porcello throw strikes on pitch one. So you don't see guys taking a strike when they trail by a lot of runs early in a ball game. Interesting in an era where everybody is complaining that too many guys grind out at bats and you end up with four hour games. Duffy goes away showing one. Just by Porcello. Pedroy is there and that's the inning. We'll head to the home half of the fifth at Fenway Park. d backs trail at 10 1.
in the fifth inning. D-backs fans introducing Pepsi Moji. Every time you grab an ice cold Pepsi 20 ounce bottle this summer, you'll find a Pepsi Moji on the side of the bottle. There are hundreds of different designs, so show the world how you feel. And what do you love with Pepsi Moji? Using hashtag Save with Pepsi. That Granky a short day, only got five outs. And we've seen Dominic Leone, now Adam Lowe in the left hander out from the D backs bullpen. Seven appearances since his call up from AAA Reno. And Adam worked a 1 2 3 8th inning yesterday, and he's worked scoreless baseball in six of his seven outings with the Diamondbacks. And Adam Lowe, and, uh, either intentionally or unintentionally, seems like uh, the first pitch of his appearance is usually very tight to the hitter. Did happen a couple of times last night. Sandy Leone singled and scored. He's one for two. Red Sox catcher leads it off here in the fifth. Adam Lowen is a big dude out there. 6'6, 245. So that's intimidating enough for some guys, especially a left hand hitter. One or one. was interesting in the Diamondbacks media notes uh, talking about interleague play and Diamondbacks of course using a designated hitter here at Fenway Park. On the list of uh, Diamondbacks the current Diamondbacks 24 games a designated hitter Ricky Weeks leads all the Diamondbacks with 24 designated hitter Chris Herman and Adam Lowen are second with three appearances as a designated hitter. Of course Adam Lowen after he had troubles as a starting pitcher with the Orioles became an outfielder with the Blue Jays. A fascinating baseball story. Adam was a first round pick by Baltimore in 2002, the fourth overall pick in that draft. Parts of three seasons as a starter in Baltimore, suffered a stretch fracture in his elbow, and life as a starting pitcher just didn't work out for him, so. In 2009 he converted into an outfielder in the Blue Jays organization and five years ago had a very good season hitting for their triple A team. He hit 306 and more than 500 at bats had 17 home runs and got to the big leagues that year as a September call up with the Blue Jays played all three outfield spots and eventually went back to pitching became a reliever with the Phillies and now here he is with the Diamondbacks. <laughs> Off walk for Leone. Here is the rookie outfielder Andrew Benintendi wearing Hawk Harrelson's number 40. And of course, Ken Harrelson. Most people these days know the Hawk as the longtime uh, TV voice of the Chicago White Sox, but he was a very good player and had uh, maybe his best years ever right here in Boston. Wearing Benintendi's number 40. Although Hawk, I'm sure, will tell you it was his number 40. Mm-hmm. Wearing those. Nehru suits. Oh, there you go. The great Leo gave us that one. Our stat man on the cover of SI. The swinger. And the Hawk Harrelson. And the Hawk. You look at some of the numbers. 1968, which was the year after the impossible dream season of 67 here when the Red Sox went from last to first and won the pennant. But the Hawk in 68 led the league with 109 RBIs, had 35 home runs that year. And was third in the MVP voting. And the next year, he was not happy at all because he got himself traded to Cleveland. Sonny Siebert, Vicente Romo, part of the deal, coming to Boston. And Harrelson, there were about three days where he refused to go. And he always tells the story of walking into the uh, GM's office and saying, well, that's a heck of a trade you made for yourself there. One problem, I ain't going. <laughs> but eventually he wound up in Cleveland. And, you know, and being a, his history. an Indian fan growing up, I was extremely excited at the uh, prospect of the Hawk coming to play for the Indians. And then, you know, said he wasn't going to go, and I immediately didn't like it. What well, do you he, mean you don't want to play for the Indians? <laughs> he did hit 27 home runs that year for Cleveland. But uh, he actually finished up in Cleveland, played two more years after that, and he was done as a player. 
became a broadcaster. Then the GM of the White Sox for a while. That did not go at all well. And of course, he's now been a long time TV voice of Chicago. Before we make our picks to click, you would home make yours. <laughs> and I, indirectly, I blame the time of game issues on Ken Harrelson. Uh oh, what happened? And Intendi, base hit at number 40 here at Fenway. It's got a lot of hits in it. Leon heads for third. What happened with the home? Well, Ken Harrelson is widely recognized as the first guy to use a Matic glove. Oh, because it was a golf club because he was and still is a big golfer. Big time golfer. And you know, depending on the story you believe, uh, he had played a round of golf and was almost late getting to the ballpark and still had his golf club in his back pocket uh, when he got to the ballpark and decided just to wear it for batting practice and in the game that night. And now everybody wears batting gloves. And running gloves. And running and gloves. Fielding gloves. Sliding gloves. <laughs> Owens worked himself into a bit of a mess here to start the fifth inning. A walk to Leon, a single by Benintendi. They're in the corners, nobody out for Pedroia, who's already three for three with three singles. Zoom ball missed, and it's 1-0. Oh. Well, Mike Trout not in the starting lineup today. He had the longest active games played streak in the majors at 178. He may still get in the ball game. Defensive replacement, pinch hitter, pinch runner. There's ways to get into the game late, but if he does not, I guess Kyle Ripken's streak is safe for another 15 years. That's a an accomplishment, if you want to use that word, that seems to serve no purpose whatsoever. And in fact, I'm sure it becomes a deterrent to playing well over the course of a long, hot season. Doing I want Pedroia. Day game at Fenway Park, so that means one thing here in this ballpark. Pedroia lines it over the head of Segura. Leon will score, but intending on his way to third, and it's 11-1. Walking two singles open up the Boston fifth. Dustin Pedroia, four for four. He's knocked in two. I was going to say, because of the unique layout of this ballpark, as Mike Butcher pays Adam Lowen amount visit, they have to alter the seats which would be the hitter's background. So for a day game here at this ballpark, they actually have to cover up two whole sections of bleachers out there. And it's a park that only holds about 37,000 anyway. But so during day games here, that tarp has to come on because that's what the hitter looks at in home plate. So seats for day games even harder to come by in this ballpark. Last two games of this series, you couldn't shoehorn another person into this ballpark. It has been standing room only both games. Same thing here today. There's a few empty seats here and there. I'm sure people are trying to find uh, some shade to get out of the sunny seats. Brock Holt. Holt is the only Red Sox starter without a base hit today. He has struck out, popped up, reached on a fielder's choice. He has scored a run. Scored three runs last night. He's one of those guys that always seems to be in the middle of things. Two. I want to send out happy birthday wishes to David Peralta. Oh, hey, yeah. the freight train. Freight train. We know he's dialed in back in Arizona today. Happy birthday, David. Get well soon. Not the same without you. And on the other side of the field, Clay Buckholz, last night's starting pitcher, celebrating a birthday today. I'm not that excited about that. No. <laughs> Late Mark Fidrich. 
Well, you talk about a legend around oh. here out from Northampton, Massachusetts, that area, or Northboro, I should say. Mark DeBird Fidrich. Tried to make a comeback with the Red Sox, pitched in Pawtucket for a while. And it just never could get that shoulder healthy. What a phenomenon he was. He was, a, he was a pig farmer out here after he retired. Great play by CO to snag that one. Benatendi back to the bag at third. Game where expressing your individuality was frowned upon. He did everything he could to express his individuality. Got down on his hands and knees to manicure the mound out there. He used to talk to the baseball. Had that wild hair hanging out all over the place. He was something else. And boy, could he pitch. Mookie Betts, all too briefly, however. Betts has two homers, a single. He's knocked in five. He scored three runs. Benintendi, the runner at third, and Pedroia, a four for four day at first. Mookie Betts sends another one on its way, and it's gone. His third home run of the ball game, his second three run homer. He's got eight RBIs, and it's 14 to one. in his last 14 games has six doubles, six home runs, and 17 RBIs. David Ortiz. This ballpark was built in 1912, and there has never been a four-homer game by one player in this yard. That's amazing, isn't it? Five innings into this ball game. And you're talking about legends like oh, DiMaggio yeah. and Mantle. I mean, go way back. Mookie Betts. Two run homer in the first, three run home runs in the second and the fifth. In between that, he singled and scored a run. Four runs scored, eight runs batted in. 2 0 on Big Poppy, who singled his last time up. Low and so far in the fifth has gotten only one out, and that was a line drive to shortstop. And behind on Ortiz, 3 0. Well, not uncharted territory for Mookie Betts. That's his second three homer game this season. Wow. Well, Ortiz backed out of the box on that one and takes a base on ball. Second walk in the inning issued by Lowen. That's going to be enough for Chip Hale. Well, Adam Lowen comes in, gets only one out. Boston gets four runs. Look at Ortiz. He didn't appear to ask for time either. Well, he just assumed he wasn't going to get anything to hit there. We'll take a break. Diamondbacks down 14-1.
after that walk. Ryan Holiday, the backup catcher, will run for Big Poppy. New pitcher for the Diamondbacks, Randall Delgado. There's Brian Holiday, who runs for Ortiz. Still one out in this inning. Delgado worked a scoreless outing yesterday at Fenway Park. He's given up only three hits in his last five appearances. 53 outings at a 4-4-7 ERA. Hanley Ramirez. Hanley has singled twice, scored a run, knocked in a run. Steven Matz, no hitter for the Mets, was just broken up on an infield single by Alexei Ramirez. Mets lead the Padres at City Field, 2-0, they're in the eighth inning. Hanley shoots one toward the left field corner and it bangs off the wall. Holiday will head for third. And it's a double for Hanley Ramirez. He's three for four. And now they're start to empty the bench as Travis Shaw will come on and run for Hanley at second. Bradley Jr. I mentioned a moment ago that uh, Mookie Betts has two three homer games this season. The only other Red Sox player to have two three homer games in a season. Back in 1957, Teddy Ball game. It's amazing to read the famous uh, John Updike story about that for the New Yorker. Hub fans bid kid do and read about how few people were in the ballpark here. In his last game in 1960, under 10,000, I believe. On the ground to first, Goldie has it. Holiday scores, and it's 15 to one. Bat in the Boston fifth is Aaron Hill. Sox now with 15 runs on 17 hits. Red Sox have tied their season high with 15 runs. They scored 15 at Target Field against the Twins on June 11. Boston season high in hits is 21. Change up from Delgado, one and two on Hill. The ground 
ball to third for Jake Lamb. And he throws it away. Shaw scores from third. 16 to 1. This is getting remarkably embarrassing. Ball in good shape, plenty of time. Just gets underneath that throw, it tails away from Goldie. Can't make the catch. Aaron Hill sliding in there at first base safely. And for the second time in the ball game, the Red Sox will bat around. I put a hit up on the board for that one. How can that be? Base hit for Aaron Hill and an RBI. Leon has singled. He's walked. He scored twice. That can't be the hit. It just can't be. I, I, I don't know how that's possible. Now they put an error up on the board. They changed the hit total for the Red Sox. Now they've perhaps changed their minds and put an error up there. Green one. Red Sox sent 10 men to the plate in the second inning. They scored seven runs. They've sent 10 to the plate here in the fifth and scored six. A walk to Leon. The second base on balls in a row. Andrew Benintendi, who singled earlier in this inning, will bat again. He's two for three. And an RBI double in the second. Aaron Hill is the runner at second. Sandy Leone at first. run of bad pitching for the Diamondbacks recently. Three of the last four series they've allowed opponents a season high in runs. The Nationals last Monday, the Brewers last Saturday, and the Red Sox today. 16 runs on 17 hits. Change up missed and it's two and one on Benintendi. Tendy, the rookie, four for ten in the series. Two hits last night, two more today. Looked like he broke his bat, shallow center, Bourne coming in. And he's got it. The inning ends, but the Red Sox add six, and they lead it 16 to 1.
Sports Arizona is brought to you by Lone View Casino. Get in on big wins. By Chaz Roberts Air Conditioning and Plumbing, choose Chaz. And by Cox Gigablast, how will you live the gig life? The Back Bay in Boston, Massachusetts, right on the ocean here, Boston Haba. Sixth inning, Travis Shaw takes over at first base after pinch running for Hanley Ramirez, so Ortiz and Ramirez both out of the game. Rick Porcello back out there for the sixth inning. And Phil Goslin will hit for Gene Segura. Goslin batting 274. He's got two homers. He started Friday's series opener at first base. Had a couple of hits in an RBI. He's down quickly 0-2. So Chip Hale will get Segura at least a half day off here. The way that he plays, which is all out all the time, even a half game off is something. Pedroia, the backhand stop, spins and throws him out. Dustin Pedroia. Looked like a base hit ticketed for center field. Pedroia with a sliding play there, rights himself and throws on to Travis Shaw, who's taken over at first base for Hanley Ramirez. Robbery. D backs through five innings have just. Three hits, one of the Michael Bourne solo homer to lead off the fourth, his third of the year, and that's the only Arizona run to this point. Michael has had a good road trip, eight hits on this road trip. This was the home run in the fourth. Deep corner of right field. Every once in a while, Michael does that. He just kind of slaps one, and it's a no-doubt home run out to right. Yeah, I think the book on Michael uh, hasn't changed much throughout the course of his career. He's a guy that a lot of teams just pitch him away, play him away. Well, pop up the other way. And hope he does that. Yeah. <laughs> ben Intendi has the two outs. You know, guys that don't have opposite field power, you throw them up and out over the plate and hope they hit a fly ball to the opposite field. But you try to come inside on Michael Bourne, he can be very quick and he can hit some line drive home runs down that right field line. Goldie 0 for 2. He has twice grounded out. One hit in the series, a single Friday. Sends this out to Mookie Betts. And a quick sixth inning for Rick Porcello. Diamondbacks trail the Red Sox 61.
16-1. Fans follow Diamondbacks baseball live with the MLB.com at that app. You can stay up to the moment at any moment with game day, live game video highlights, stat cast news, the whole thing. Just download MLB.com at bat. It's the number one app for live baseball on your phone and your tablet. Well, a big thrill here the other day for Massachusetts native Steve Hathaway. Grew up about 30 minutes from this ballpark. Struck out the only batter he faced. Has worked six consecutive scoreless appearances, given up only four hits with four strikeouts. He's done a very good job. And some changes around him defensively as we start the bottom of the sixth inning. Have those for you in a moment. Justin Pedroia, four for four with four singles, leads it off, and he drives that one to deep center. Bourne runs it down in the warning track, and that's the first out. So they finally retire Pedroia one away. Brock Holt. Brock Holt, the only Red Sox starter without a hit. Good team player. Somebody's got to make the outs. He still found a way to score a run in that second inning, reached on a fielder's choice when Boston got. Seven in the second. They scored six in the fifth. Phil Gosselin, who hit for Gene Segura in the top half of the sitting stage in the game. And he takes over at second base. Socrates Brito is in right field, replacing Asbani Tomas. Moss moves over to left field, replacing Drury, and Drury plays over at third. Jake Lamb comes out of the ball game. Okay. Steve Hathaway comes in, gets Pedroy to fly out, rings up Holtz. Big thrill for this young man, rookie left-hander. And now he'll face Mookie Betts, who's had a career day here today. Three home runs. He's knocked in eight. And these are the Cox Gig Life High Speed Highlights. A two-run homer in the first, a three-run homer in the second. He singled and scored in the fourth, and in the fifth hit another three-run home run. said Bob there has never in the history of this ballpark been a four home run game here. Two. Good change up that time by Steve Hathaway. He just cued it right off the end of the bat in foul territory up the first baseline. He drives it to right center. Socrates Brito is there, just shy of the Boston bullpen. Nice job by Steve Hathaway once again. It works a one, two, three inning. Seventh inning on the way from Fenway Park.
Put a bow on the story, as I mentioned, young David Moss back in the valley through the miracle of television and the internet. We have a shot of him watching Diamondbacks Live as we deliver his thank you card to David Ortiz. How cool is that? Nice payoff for you guys. Very nice. Huh? So David, thanks for uh, making our weekend here. And, and before I leave you, because I, I gotta go downstairs into the swamp and then head into the clubhouse for our post game coverage. I have one last item for you, Steve, from Todd's garage. When you get a second. I, I got time. <laughs> I thought you might. I, you know, sure. <laughs> what do you got there? I can't see. Okay, you... see that? Did you, what is it, Did like a Rorschach that test? That, that is the worst autograph that I ever got when I was a kid. I, thousands and thousands of baseball players came through Rochester, New York. Wait, what? And I had them sign autographs. That Why right they, there. Yeah, who was it? That's your guy. That's Win Oh, that's the Win Remerswall. Oh. Look at that thing. Win Remerswall, as we mentioned the other day, uh, uh -huh. was from Holland. He was a... Yep. A Dutch person and player, and every year he would be late to spring training in Winter Haven, Florida, <laughs> because right. Win Remerswall had visa problems. Visa problems. You could yeah. count on it every year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, if your name was Win Remerswall, your signature wouldn't look like I John Hancock either. I must have asked him 15 times as the Pawtucket Red Sox pulled into town to sign either an index card or a to play the Rochester Red Wings. That's right. Which was the Orioles farm club, uh -huh. right? Yep. Rock Holt fighting that son. He's got it. They retired Brito. <laughs> Win Remerswall. Win Remerswall. That's when they used to train at uh, Chain of Lakes Park in Winter Haven, Florida. Mm -hmm. Never quite seen an autograph like that since. How about that, John Hancock? There you go. Nice job by our crew here. Artistic. I like that. So I've emptied the garage. I, I poured Vor Vern Rule on you on the pregame show, as promised. Yeah, I hit Jim Ed Rice. That uh, changed that series in 75, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. I still have that DVD set. I watch uh, Joe Sr. do all the games. Yeah. It was interesting back then because uh, when they did the games, they would have the local guy in the network booth because Marty Brenneman did some of the games mm -hmm. when they were in Cincinnati. And Dick Stockton yep. did some of the games when they were here. In fact, Stockton ended up with the call on the Carlton Fisco run in game six. You'd have Kurt Gowdy up here and uh, Tony Kubek on the field and Joe Garrigio, the senior in the booth. I remember when we shot the In My Own Words with the late, great Joe Senior at his home. He let us uh, look around the, the basement and in a closet. I'll, I'll never forget when he opened the door, I looked in and there were giant canisters of film. And I said, well, what is that? It was, that's the 1975 World Series, the original recording. He had them in his house. Now, did they get turned over to people that could restore them or take care of them? I think you're watching them on a DVD. <laughs> oh, yeah, it might be. You're right. <laughs> he had all that. That closet had the baseball world, Joe Gargiola, and had, did everything that you and I and just about everybody our age group watched back then. This week in baseball. Yep. He had it. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Mel Allen. Brock Holt backs up at shortstop. Throws out Ricky Weeks Jr., two down in the seventh. You know, in, in the midst of all this ugliness, you really have to tip your cap to Rick Porcello. He's had some long half innings as his team batted around twice in this game, and he goes right back out to the mound and continues to just pound that strike zone. He's yet to have a three ball count in this game. They've been up only three hits, and they've been scattered. Segura's single to lead off the ball game. Bourne's homer to lead off the fourth. Owings a one out single in the fifth. That's been it. As Bonnie Tomas sends that one out to Benintendi. And he reaches out and runs it down just shy of the wall out there. Our thanks to the great Todd Walsh. But a slice. We stretch at Fenway Park. Diamondbacks trail at 61.
is Eek. Diamondback season ticket holders, be sure to renew your season tickets before August 31st to be eligible to win exclusive prizes like lunch with Randy Johnson, $1,000 cash, a luxury watch courtesy of Ganem Jewelers, an all-inclusive vacation with airfare courtesy of American Airlines Vacations, and more. To see the full list of prizes and to renew, visit dbacks.com slash advantage. New pitcher for the Diamondbacks as we start the home half of the seventh. It's the big right-hander, Enrique Burgos. A 288 ERA, 24 games this year. Burgos, over his last six appearances, has pitched scoreless baseball and given up just three hits. Coming off a couple of solid outings against the Mets on Tuesday and Wednesday at City Field. Brian Holiday, who pinch ran for David Ortiz, has taken over. And he'll lead off the seventh. Both teams have subbed in and out. We got Medfield High School in the booth. <laughs> Some of the old high school gang, BB, has oh, dropped okay, by. Okay. Some of the Medfield Big Blue are here. They got bailed out? <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> we talked them out. Holiday dropped that one into left center field. He's going to try and stretch it into two. Now he changes his mind and he'll back off a leadoff single. Now 18 hits for the Red Sox. Brings up Travis Shaw. Shaw 254, 14 homers. He is hitless in the series. And just five for his last 36 up there. d have the shift on Goldie. He'll play behind the runner at first. How do they let you guys in? <laughs> they told them they knew you. No, oh, that usually gets you thrown out. Oh, they paid somebody off at the gate. Slipped them a 20. Vega did. <laughs> Gave him a five. And asked for change. Yeah, <laughs> did. It worked. It got him in. <laughs> there we are up here. All right, you guys are, you, you clowns are on TV. Where are we up here? Oh, there we are. You're, uh, if you're watching in midfield mass, here's the big blue in the house. Who's minding the store if all these guys are here? Some of them are still in high school, actually. <laughs> it's funny you mention that. They were, he they were held back. <laughs> Couldn't get through Gary Stockbridge's history class, and they're still in there. <laughs> it's got studying for finals. They're all in, not only that, they're in summer school. Didn't work out. Six from Burgos. Full count three and two. And Shaw lost his bat on the backswing there. Took a big rip, fouled that ball straight back. Oh, that did catch Tuffy on the left wrist. Maybe the right wrist. That was lucky that wasn't worse. Yep, got him right there. Three two pitch. Got him. First out in the seventh. And Burgos lately just not messing around. Rare back. Fire that ball as hard as you can toward the middle of the strike zone and see what happens. He's had good success lately just overpowering opposing hitters. Jackie Bradley Jr. Two run homer in the second. Had an RBI ground at his last time up. Bradley clanged one off the foul pole in the second inning. The pesky pole in the right field corner. That's the thing. Everybody wants to sign their name on everything in this ballpark. You go inside the wall, you write your name. You go over by the pole, you write your name. 
Except if you're toughy, you go in there and they erase it. Did you hear about that? Yeah. yeah. Not good. Still looking into that. I thought Todd was exploring that. Well, Todd's had a lot on his plate this weekend. Burgos at 96, ahead of Bradley Jr., one and two. Enrique Burgos brings the heat. He strikes out Shaw and then gets Bradley Jr. two down. Well, we mentioned because of the short outing by Zach Greinke, it was going to have to be a ham and egg effort by the bullpen today with Zach Godley moving back into the starting rotation. And so far, everybody's done the best they could. Adam Lowen had a rough third of an inning, gave up five runs, but everybody else uh, put some zeros on the board. Aaron Hill. And Chip Hale told us before the ball game today that Patrick Corbin will be moved from the rotation to the bullpen. Patrick was scheduled to start Wednesday against the Mets. Jonathan Nice at Chase Field, but that'll be Zach Godley now with Corbin in the pen. Balls in there at 97 down and away. One and one on Aaron Hill. Aaron has three hits in the series. He singled and scored in the second. A seven run Boston second and a six run fifth. Happy moment for Lance Barksdale. The shade has finally moved out and he <laughs> is standing in it. I think it might be a little too late based on the way he's sweating through that shirt. Little shovel pass Owings to Gossel on the force on holiday. That's the inning. We will head to the eighth. Diamondbacks are down 61. Game summary, the Red Sox with a seven run second, a six run fifth, they lead at 16-1. Zach Greinke uh, had a rough day, guy gave up only five outs, in nine earned runs. And the Red Sox, previous season high in runs was 15, that was June 11th at Target Field. Their season high in hits is 21, they've come up just shy of that. And the new pitcher for Boston on to start the inning. Elias Elias, his third appearance of the year. Good job by Rick Porcello. You got to tip your cap. He worked seven innings of one run ball, gave up only three hits, had four strikeouts. Did not have a three ball count in the game today. Did not walk a batter, obviously. The only blemish was the Michael Bourne home run down that right field line.
Chris Owings will lead it off for the Diamondbacks. CO has one of Arizona's three hits. He singled his last time up. So Chris has now hit safely in seven straight. He's got 11 hits on the road trip. Play. After this one, the Diamondbacks go back home for a quick three game homestand, three against the New York Mets starting tomorrow. That'll be Robbie Ray and Bartolo Colon. The Odyssey for the Red Sox is only just starting. And they really got the short end of the stick from the schedule makers John Farrell's ball club after today will have only 16 home games left all season they play 30 of their final 46 on the road that is brutal that is really brutal and this next trip coming up uh, we talked about it throughout this series they go to Cleveland tonight after the ball game to play a makeup of a rain out then they go to Baltimore and play two night games, followed by a day game in Detroit on Thursday, a four game series with the Tigers, and then finish it up with four more in Tampa Bay. And they have one homestand in September when the Orioles come in for three, the Yankees for four, and then they finish up the season with three against the Blue Jays here at home, and every other game is on the road. And not only that, they're only five games into the stretch of 23 games in 23 days, and it, it gets even worse. It's a 44-day stretch during which they have one off day, mm -hmm. and that was Monday. They've already had it. I, mean, I don't know what, who they upset over there in the schedule maker's <laughs> office, but boy, that is a rough finish. CO knocks it out to right field. Mookie Vance has it. That's the first down of the eighth inning. With Boston currently two games behind the Blue Jays for the division lead. The Red Sox are holding on to that second AL wild card, but it's close. They're only a game and a half over Detroit and two ahead of Seattle. Brandon Drury over two. But they have a dominant home field advantage in this series. For whatever reason, the last 12 meetings between the Diamondbacks and the Red Sox have been right here at Fenway Park. Boston has been to Chase Field only once ever. That was back in 2007. And as the D-backs go through the AL East this year, we've already been to Toronto. We've been to Boston now. Later in September, we'll head to Baltimore. We've hosted the Rays and the Blue Jays. One of my prouder moments as the manager of the Diamondbacks when we came in here in 02 after winning the world championship in 01. Obviously, a lot of people were excited to come out and see the defending world champions, and we swept the Red Sox in a three game series and looked pretty good doing it. <laughs> Grady Little, the manager at the time, called over to the office after the ball game and complimented the team for the way they played the game. Nomar Garcia Parr had some real complimentary things to say about the 02 Diamondbacks team, and uh, you know, that's always good to come into a Cathedral of baseball like Fenway Park and be recognized because you beat the Yankees the year before first of all well, and then sweep their team. You're still getting free drinks for oh, that one. It's amazing. Brandon Drury's got a base hit. That's the fourth hit for the D-backs a one out single. You know, a lot of times the National League team going into an American League park is a little bit at a disadvantage because you don't have a designated hitter on your roster. And it's always a conundrum. Who do you DH? Do you DH one of your bench guys? Or do you DH one of your regulars who maybe needs a little time off? We had a perfect situation. We had a Rubio Durazo locked and loaded. <laughs> he, I'll tell you what, he, he raked in this ballpark. Duffy sends a fly ball to deep center field. Jackie Bradley Jr. is in the warning track. And that's the second out. 
What was it about this ballpark? I don't know. I, I mean, I think it was more about the team than anything else. Those guys, it didn't matter where they played or who they played against or who was pitching. You know, they were going to go out and play the game hard, play it right, and take their chances. And if they win, good. If they lose, we'll come back tomorrow and try it again. But uh, I think they all appreciated what Fenway Park meant uh, to, in the history of baseball and the opportunity to come in here as a visiting team and play against the Red Sox as I mentioned the fans they gave us a tremendous ovation before the first game not so much after game two and three. Yeah it wore off quickly it sure did. <laughs> well there's a little gap here you'll notice 1918 46 they lost to the Cardinals 67 the Cardinals 75 the Reds 86 and we want to talk about that 04 finally mm -hmm. they can put a red one back up. Bill Gosselin. In the hole and into left, a base hit for Gosselin. That'll bring up Michael Bourne, two on and two out. Even some of the Boston media, as you well know, partner, uh, they don't have anything good to say about anything. <laughs> That's very true. And uh, they were very complimentary of the Diamondbacks in 2002 after that three game sweep. Michael Bourne homered in the fourth, his third of the year. He's got Drury at second, Goslin at first, and two outs. Michael now with eight hits on this road trip. Padres are trailing in New York. They are behind against the Mets 5 1. That's in the ninth inning at City Field. Rockies at Philly. That game was delayed for a little bit. They're back at it now in the sixth, and Colorado trails 6 to 3. Later today, the Pirates at the Dodgers. And the Giants will host Baltimore. Johnny Cueto on the mound in that bowl game for San Francisco. Later tonight, Network game is the Cardinals at Wrigley. Chris Sale, the White Sox, was looking for his 15th win today, but he ends up taking the loss against the Marlins as the White Sox go down five to four. What uniform did he wear? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> well, the Rays are beating up on the Yankees 12 to three in the ninth at Yankee Stadium. You mentioned that Baltimore San Francisco game tonight. Johnny Cueto looking for his 14th win against our old buddy Wade Miley, pitching for the Orioles. And a crafty lefty. Horn slaps that the other way. Benintendi can't run it down. It's off the scoreboard out there. Drury will score. And it's an RBI single for Michael Bourne, who's two for four. Nice approach. We mentioned it earlier in Michael Bourne's at bat. Uh, most teams just pitch him away and play him away. And this one spoiled that theory as well. Hits it over the head of Benintendi out there in left field, who's still learning how to play the green monster. I got caught in between that time. The worst thing you can do as an outfielder is get too close to that wall and hit above you and ricochet back to the infield. That time he was able to smother it off the wall. They're on the corners with two outs for Goldie, who's 0 for 3. Goldie still one hit in the series. Elias has given up three in this inning. A 
of Porcello today. From the third inning to the seventh inning, a span of five innings, he threw a total of 55 pitches. Very efficient. Seven pitch fifth, eight pitch sixth. He had four one pitch outs in that five inning stretch. That's what you're supposed to do with a big lead in the ball game. Just attack that strike zone. The glove of Elias Pedroia at second gets the force on board. That ends the inning. Diamondbacks had a run. Bottom eight on the way. They trail at 16 2. Everybody hates the Yankees here. Well, not quite. One guy. One guy. Our director, Phil the Iron Horse Mollica. He's singing Sweet Caroline in the truck right now. What's next? Brought to you by CenturyLink. A brief three game homestand starts tomorrow night against the Mets. First of three against New York. Robbie Ray Bartolo Colon tomorrow night. Good pitching matchup Tuesday. Noah Syndergaard Thor against Braden Shipley then Zach Godley takes Patrick Corbin's rotation spot he'll start the game Wednesday against John Meese. Well, you definitely want to be there Tuesday first of all for dollar dogs but uh, also see the track meet against Noah Syndergaard should the Diamondbacks get guys on base it will be a track meet. Jake Barrett his 50th appearance of the year a 3 8 0 ERA he'll work the bottom of the eighth inning. The catcher Sandy Leone who has single walked twice and scored twice leads it off. Jay coming off that blown save Wednesday at New York against the Mets. A walk to the leadoff man, then a pinch hit home run by Kelly Johnson. Diamondbacks won it in 12 when Oscar Hernandez led off the top of the 12th with a homer. His first big league home run. Chopper that's very slowly hit to first. Goldie's got it. Barrett covers one away. It's not quite San Francisco, but uh, this guy's here a little early. Sneak it up on Jake Barrett. And he's still going. Very bold. Andrew Benintendi. He's going to be on the rosin bag in a second here. <laughs> he just minded his own business. Do what you got to do. I'll be here.
Bird is just chilling <laughs> back there, man. I mean, it's just no problem. I don't think Jake has noticed yet. By the way, that there's a chance that could be a, a Pidgey, which I'm told is a Pokemon. So get your phone. Good thing Barrett isn't playing Pokemon. He might be out there chasing after that thing. 3-0 on Benintendi. Playing the count is full three and two. Walk. <laughs> Dustin Pedroia, four for five today, all singles, and has scored twice back to two runs. all the way out there in the bright sunlight, the entire home plate area encased in shadow. Been quite a run here for Dustin Pedroia out of Arizona State. American League Rookie of the Year in 07 when he won a World Series ring. League MVP the following season. Hits this one high in the air, deep left center field, and it clangs halfway off the monster. Ryan Butterfield will stop Benintendi at third. And Dustin Pedroia has his fifth hit today. Every team in baseball would gladly take a player like Dustin Pedroia. This guy is a true grinder. Every at bat, every pitch, every play, every day. He had a meeting on the mound earlier this year when Carl Willis, a pitching coach, came out to talk to one of his pitchers and Dustin Pedroia stepped in between the pitching coach and the pitcher and aired him out. You need guys like that on Absolutely. the field. Absolutely. Chip Hale wants a quick word as Brock Holt steps in. Wants the entire infield to join him. Checking the baseball headlines when he woke up this morning and read your newspaper or logged on, he would have seen that, uh, as Bob mentioned earlier, John Carlos Stanton was injured in the ball game yesterday for the Miami Marlins, who are right in the thick of the NL postseason race, but they have just learned that Stanton will miss the rest of the year. Oh, man. John Carlo was out for the season. The MRI, in the words of Don Mattingly, was serious. So that's devastating news for the Marlins, who are having a very nice season. Infield comes in now. One out for Brock Holt, second and third. That's bad news for all baseball fans around the National League. That was a one-man show watching John Carlos Stan take batting practice and then occasionally carry it right into the game. Well, his performance in the home run derby at Petco Park is one of the highlights of the year regardless. Foul ground, that's flagged down by Drury. And one last at bat today for Mookie Betts. What a day it's been. A 23 year old right fielder, a two run homer in the first off Zach Greinke. They got Greinke again in the second, this time a three run homer. He singled and scored in the fourth. 
Then another three-run home run in the fifth. He's got three homers and eight RBIs. He scored four runs. There has never been a four home run game in Fenway Park history. Second and third, two outs. Hard to third, Drury spins and throws. Goldie's got it and they retire Mookie Betts as Barrett strands two. We head to the ninth inning at Fenway Park. Diamondbacks are down 16 to two. the verge of getting swept here at Fenway Park. They trail the Red Sox 16 to two. Socrates Brito, Ricky Weeks Jr. and Yasmani Tomas do up for the Diamondbacks. Four, five, and six here on the top of the ninth against Elias. John Farrell with a 14 run lead has done away with his DH. Aaron Hill moves from third to second replacing Dustin Pedroia. Holiday, who was the DH will take over third. Socrates Brito leads it off. Dustin Pedroia out of the ball game after his fifth career five hit game, which is the most in Red Sox history. Four singles and a double today. He had two RBIs. It's just been that kind of game, and unfortunately, Bob, we've seen a few too many of these as of late. The 15th time in the last 41 games that the D-backs have allowed at least nine runs. Ouch. Brito squirts that one the other way, a leadoff single. Seventh hit for the Diamondbacks. Four of them against Elias. <laughs> Only the second team this season to allow six or more runs in two separate innings. The Rockies did it back on April 9th against the Padres, gave up six in the fourth and six in the ninth. It's only the second time in franchise history the Diamondbacks have done that, at least six runs in two different innings. Last time was 0 5 against the Reds. Mickey Weeks Jr. looks at ball one. Shallow center. Jackie Bradley Jr. has it, one away. That'll bring up Yasmani Tomas. 
So also for three. at the first pitch. Hits it right to Holiday at third. And Aaron Hill turns the double play. And the Diamondbacks are swept in Boston. They lose this series and road trip finale 16 to 2. What about the only good thing you can say about this game is it's over. And baseball, you get another opportunity to do it again tomorrow. Hopefully the Diamondbacks will come out a little bit more inspired against that Mets team back at Chase Field. Two hours and 49 minutes, ironically perhaps the shortest game of this series. It was certainly a short day for Zach Greinke, who got only five outs in the ball game. He went one and two third, gave up nine runs all earned on ten hits, including three home runs. Yeah, just uh, not sure what happened to Zach today, but uh, once again, you really have to give a lot of credit to this Red Sox offense. There's a reason they've been leading the world in every offensive category this season. Well, the Red Sox finished the ball game with 16 runs on 19 hits. They beat the D-backs 16 to two. Diamondbacks swept three in New York over the Mets, and they are swept here by the Boston Red Sox. We'll have much more from Fenway Park. Todd Walsh will have Diamondbacks live post-game show. That's coming up next on Fox Sports Arizona.